again utilizing the jawbone of an ass. Oh. Or else. Or else this ass here is going to use his own jawbone. Yeah. Once again, I'm uh, uh, driving for a little bit. It's kind of a little bit windy at my back, and I hope the wind doesn't. Uh, and I hope the winds are not destroying the audio. Or I mean, it probably would do you some good because uh, you'd hear the wind more, and it would make more sense than I do. wouldn't even let me uh, light up a smoke so <laughs> true south wouldn't let me light up a smoke anyway somehow picked up this obscure uh, uh, cast off discarded little jawbone of a caribou so I'm gonna use it There's a concept running around on the internet. This has uh, been spoken of by people smarter than me. Uh, I, I like it. And I, I believe it. I have also seen such a concept in life, or what you would call... Uh, I've seen such concepts, and I've lived them as well. So these smart people that are native, or what you would call indigenous, and uh, what the dominant society would uh, disregard and uh, scoff at and make fun of and sometimes in, in prison and, and, and incarcerate or whatever for various reasons, but uh, anyway, and otherwise label such indigenous people as not knowing what they're talking about and so on and so forth. That's a judgmental attitude. And the, in order for dominant society to fully be accepted in this world, they're coming to the ideas that, well, they have to accept other people now and uh, other people's point of, points of view somewhat. So It might not be the leaders that are doing those things, but there's all kinds of people popping up with new age ideas and they're exploring the concepts that the natives themselves once knew for thousands and hundreds of thousands of years and so on and even more back to the beginning so. and if any of you people have lived around here and there like I have then you would also know of this little concept that I, I like I've been thinking about it and it makes sense for you non-natives, you might not like it. Huh. If you think about it, just embrace it for a moment. In some way you will realize this truth. I was born in South Dakota and I lived there for about 10 years of my life. 
So you would call me a South Dakota. Lineage wise you would look at him, oh well, this little Indian boy, he's he's an Indian boy and he's he's Lakota and he's Hunk Papa Lakota and he's he's native. <laughs> he's, he's indigenous. <laughs> and since dominant uh, culture has said, well, we run this land, this government that we've established legally and on paper and without precedence and whatever. This, Everyone that lives here in this new country that we just formed, or and are forming still, and whatever. Whether some people are, in, people of all colors are born here, or whether some people immigrate here, and migrate here, and settle, it, but if they live peacefully, and so on and so on, but then they become Americans. So. <laughs> and you have a lot of the native people somehow seeing the good of this dominant culture that comes, comes over. A few hundred years ago at least, within the last, um, within these last centuries of time. Because honestly, this country, this Western Hemisphere has been visited by a lot of people. It wasn't just discovered in 1492 or so. It was visited by a lot of other people. Some of them didn't stay long and some people did settle and then, well, for the most part, the natives were still here. And we still won out, I guess, <laughs> as far as the, uh, who owns the land that's, uh, who lives here or whatever. So. But all the people that are, I guess, take away all the bad stuff, take away all of the pride and prejudice, whatnot that goes on amongst us. Hopefully, we all call ourselves Americans. Those of us that live here. this country. I'm gonna step on in here a little bit after a few minutes so I won't freeze. I like this concept though. I've embraced it. I call myself an American. And since I'm one of the good natives that has lived a good, good life, I've stayed out of jail, I've tried the drug called alcohol. <laughs> That's not so bad and everybody right now embraces it. There's TV ads and internet ads about alcohol. And I still really vaguely remember what was for my childhood. <laughs> Seeing uh, cigarette ads on TV, but now they don't do that as much as they used to, but or at all now, so. <laughs> and of course, now the new drug that everyone's fighting against is pot, and anyway. But all that aside though, I mean, new land, country, we're all growing and exploring, and you know, we're all residents. So we call ourselves Americans. Yeah. But I'm not trying to drag politics or anything in here. It's, it's, it's all good. Whatever we say, I gotta leave you for a second and turn the TV, uh, turn my music off, so YouTube won't hit me with the copyright issues. So I won't have to say, well, just because a few seconds of uh, 
music popped up on my little player. Well, I have to say, <laughs> this is a parody video. It's, uh, so. Oh, hey. <laughs> Y'all need to see this. <laughs> nice little sticker, isn't it? Oh, you can't see it very well. It's a little pipe there. A little sticker on there. The, anyway. That says, we are Lakota. <laughs> words on the uh, words on the window behind me say Lakota Pride. So, and that's good. But anyway, we have other people saying that. Well, and they speak from a native perspective. They say. Because we are enlightened and because we talk about good good concepts and the Lakota culture, or the native culture in general, you know, from sea to shining sea and from the Arctic, uh, what, uh, the North Arctic all the way down to the tip of South America, all the, all the enlightened people of some kind, all embrace the all-encompassing ideas of uh, universal truths and uh, sharing and caring and whatnot and uh, actually that is a good thing to do in my culture and my language there are no words specifically for I you know I went out hunting I went out and did battle I saved my village, or I saved my people, or I did this. No, no, we didn't have those words. Even though the eh, the idea or the concept, of course, was quite obvious. But overall, from the natives, they always shared things. They always more or less took responsibility. Yes personal responsibility for themselves for things but as far as doing work and sharing and everyone everyone benefited from some things from a lot of things and that's where this new little concept is that everyone sees but they do not see it and some of these smarter people that are native they talk about on the internet and I don't hear anyone else doing that but hopefully that will change when you share things and open ideas up and include other people as you would say If you do that with, with your own self, with whatever goes on in your life, then hopefully it is something that other people would share in as well, even if it's just an idea or a concept. So. And it's this concept of everyone being here now in the Western Hemisphere, the where, wherever you live, somewhere on this uh, continental North or South America, whether you are Canadian or Alaskan, or whether you are uh, living in the contiguous United States, or whether you live in Mexico or any other country uh, connected by land all the way down to South America, you live in the North and South Americas, you live in the Americas. And now today, in the year 2017, in the month of October, uh, anyone of any skin color, anyone that is non-native of the yellow, black, and the uh, white culture, whether your ancestors of uh, recent years or hundreds of years ago, uh, came to this Western Hemisphere and settled somewhere, Hopefully retaining your identity even back then on up till today Doesn't matter what you call yourself if you're Irish-American 
Italian American Mexican American <laughs> and so on it doesn't matter whether you're like I said this encompasses the blacks the whites and the yellow uh, people it doesn't matter whether you were a slave or your ancestors were or whether you were you were bought by force it, I'm not worried about any of those things right now it's just this nice idea that we have to think about and uh, somehow include in our little paradigms and, and then move on <laughs> but we are right now uh, Americans and as far as the natives say and what we think most of us because <laughs> not every Native American is in touch with their culture right now and not every Native American uh, speaks their own language or speaks other languages uh, most native um, some Native Americans are stuck on the idea of uh, hating white people and they don't like uh, things that other white people do or the white culture has but yet they still drive cars and they still have cell phones and they still use the green money and they go up to the machines and use those little plastic cards to get money and a uh, so, well if you don't like white culture then what, what the hell are you doing uh, li living in a square house and, <laughs> and what are you doing driving a car made in Japan and why are you reading books and magazines or things on the internet and most of the writing came from Arabic culture and uh, had other forms of uh, northern European uh, font size and uh, letters and uh, whatever you know so <laughs> and you run to the store with your little EBT card that came from the US government somehow and <laughs> you you fucking buy a little round uh, uh, portion of food that you throw in the uh, oven to heat up and it's called a pizza and, uh, those things came from the Italian people, but you know, also the concept of uh, uh, pasta dishes and stuff. That was also Southeast Asian uh, uh, fair. That was also a Southeast Asian invention. Uh, it wasn't just exclusively Italian. Anyway, I'm not. I'm not worried about these little things that we learned from history. And uh, but always think of the good things is what I'm trying to say we are all Americans so just embrace that idea right now we live somehow in this land in the Western Hemisphere and uh, I was born in South Dakota and I moved around the Midwest area for a few years my first stepdad was a combiner or he worked on a combine cruise and uh, most of the early spring through the late fall uh, months, we were on the move a lot. So I moved from North Dakota down to Texas, uh, Oklahoma, and you know, that little stretch of land we also moved around a lot. And I remember spending time with a bunch of other kids that were my age in this little caravan, this traveling convoy that we were always a part of every summer and uh, for a few months at a time. And, I still remember some of the white ladies uh, as the uh, the wives and girlfriends would hang around each other and uh, also include my mom sometimes and uh, but uh, mostly it was the children that everyone looked after when we played around so <laughs> so even that little concept you know hey I was a, a member of a, a combine crew I was family of uh, a, a group of combiners so mostly they were white people but uh, you know, so that idea of being included somehow for a while and all the good concepts that come with it, yes. I'm quite proud of that. Uh, I was also a church member uh, uh, of a religious organization and organ an, an organized religion, so I, I don't uh, embrace that idea anymore, but still on the books and in the records somewhere because I have not resigned or anything. And, I just walked away and I will never go back so that's my resignation so 
and I don't believe in the stories and scriptures uh, like I used to and I don't believe in the powers that be that are still that that I guess other people would say well you haven't resigned so you're still on the books that means you're still a member you still have the priesthood okay well bring your wife or your daughter over here I'll give them the priesthood too because they're equal with us you and me so that's what I would say to anybody well, I'm gonna start giving the priesthood out to everyone so so if you don't, don't want me to be doing shit like this, then don't bother me about your uh, membership. and Don't bother me about being included in your group. Uh, that's what I would say as far as if any organized religion was wanting to keep me or even if... We were once again in the uh, years or decades or centuries of the Crusades and stuff. And if you had to pick a side, I, I would not join organized religion. At all or any but anyway like I said think about some of these good things and recognize them for what they are and keep the good and discard the bad but we right now uh, well most of us within the sound of my voice uh, are Americans right now There's no harm in that Honestly study the history, honestly study uh, from both sides, the white point of view and the native point of view or the indigenous points of view. Uh, there's all, there's hundreds, there was thousands of different tribes and other, uh, yeah, other groups uh, that lived on this land from the northern Arctic all the way down to the tip of South America. So. And they've pretty much all assimilated, they've all joined the white dominant culture that currently currently uh, uh, runs our government that also pr pretty much is a superpower right now and runs the world uh, in league with other uh, leading families and so on and so forth that run this world of course I'm not talking about any of that but yes we, we are Americans and uh, most of uh, most people today that are living in Americans, they would call themselves Americans. But some of these natives that speak about, well, if you're American, here's here's another concept for you to think about, and here's another truth for you to. Uh, before all of this was, uh, before all this European and uh, uh, Asian exploration and anyone else that explored these Western Hemisphere lands hundreds or thousands of years ago before anyone moved in as a dominant society and took over and uh, put genocide upon the residents it was the natives that lived here in the Western Hemisphere around the what we call the uh, North and South Americas And it was that way for hundreds of years before any dominant culture came here. And there were other civilizations also in the distant past that were here. Most of them were also red or of some kind. Uh, <laughs> but you have to study those things on your own. Like I said, I'm not going to delve into those things. I just like this concept right now that I've been thinking of. And that concept is that pretty much all the yellow and black and white people of the last few hundred years or so that joined this nation that lived here and that settled until today of all the people here that pretty much joined uh, membership and live here and call yourself whatever uh, country that you live in but the predominant name behind all of that is American because it's the North or South American continent it was the white people of the uh, um, American 
that pretty much took over the last few hundred years and said this is the Americans, you know, it, it, it wasn't the people of the south, all the Portuguese and Spanish people that took over and started their government, uh, you know, it's not Spaniards right now that are in the White House or anything, it's not Brazilians or Nicaraguans or or any of the old time and Andes or uh, a Peruvian or any other of the red people that lived here. It's the white people that are currently in power. So the world collectively looks over and says, what's, and says well, American, United States of America, USA. You, you, if you were born over there somewhere in the Western Hemisphere, you, you are American. And then, of course, they break it down to whatever country or state you are from, so, and whatever skin color you have and language that you speak, and so on and so forth, so. But everyone that is non-native, and your ancestry is if it is non-native, you live here now uh, because of your ancestors. And for the most part, a lot of you people call yourselves Americans that live here from the northern Arctic all the way down to South America. Any place in between on the Western Hemisphere and of course in the islands of the West Pacific and the far reaches of uh, Alaska where I currently live right now and uh, where I'm speaking to you all from. By the road, uh, after I took a pee break and a smoke break, <laughs> you should call yourselves not only uh, New Americans, you know, your your ancestors that first moved here, and somehow, for good or bad, they ended up staying here and settled here or whatever, and hopefully for good. Whether they did this so at the time or not, but they were n New Americans. But you have to look back look back in the past and say who lived here first well it's what current uh, paradigm it's what current words that everyone uses and well these guys are the American Indians or these these this group of people are uh, Native American of no matter what group of people they came from whether they were from the uh, northern arctic regions or anywhere through the uh, land mass heading on south to the tip of south america somewhere you are new american right now as far as the last few hundred years ago i mean from the last few hundred years but you didn't just join the recent americans because you're living here, if you do, you are also what some of these indigenous and native speakers that I've heard over my lifetime and even seen a few YouTube accounts of people talking the same thing, these same ideas that uh, all the non-natives that live here and call themselves Americans, you are also the you are also the new Native Americans. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, you get to say, well, I, I want to join this tribe here or there, or yay, I get to, I get to enroll in so and such and such a tribe, and I, I get to have all the college education benefits, and I get monthly money, and I, I get I get uh, uh, free monthly commodities and I get free housing. And so <laughs> I mean, for some people, it could mean that. I mean, it depends on whether any certain tribe, whether wherever you live at, uh, is accepting enrollment or even decides to include uh, white people or <laughs> or an obvious uh, uh, or. or uh, an obvious skin color other than, you know, brown or, or red, as you would say, in their tribal memberships. It's up to them. It's, it's, it's not up to me. But if you ask me, uh, there would be some type of new classification of uh, 
Americans, yes, that would also include um, that the those words that would also include that new definition. But that's just me because you know that's how good this current <coughs> this current society, this current dominant white society, has been to me and to my people. Yeah, for the most part. And right now I served twice for my country and did some other government work in between and yeah, maybe afterward, but taking the, all the good and not the bad, you know, I've served my country twice, I've been in uniform, I've done other, I've done other things for this uh, state or for my village or for my tribe or uh, wherever I lived at, I tried to be a good person and tried to make myself useful here or there. Eh, so, so as a veteran I get my veterans benefits and uh, get a little monthly check of something. I get monthly money, uh, monies of some kind, mostly because of hearing loss. The right ear sometimes goes in and out and fades. Uh, it's always best to talk to me from the left side. Or somehow psychologically and socially, if I like you or whatever, then fucking hey, I mean, stand to my right and talk to me and I'll hear every word you say. Uh, my little spirit, my little brain and all those advanced things that I have been uh, blessed with and given with when Creator came to me uh, uh, in my lifetime, touched me physically and uh, my body went into seizure and then my brain adjusted and so on and so forth. I mean using all of that stuff yes i'll pay attention to you and talk to you when you're on my deaf side and or my side that's not uh, able to hear as well sure i'll i'll hear every word you say or i'll pay attention to you or whatever but for the most part total strangers you know people i don't really care about at any particular time i hey fucking all right oh oh you're talking to me what 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 happened this is the good ear what what you know, but that's just me. I'm, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> if I want to be cranky, sometimes I get that. Uh, I get that benefit from having lived and having, having done all this shit and having been through all this shit of w whatever happens. But uh, all non-native people, though, yes, you are the new Native American. Your ancestors. You know, 20, 30, 100 years ago, 300 years ago. You, if they moved here and somehow you ended up, I mean, all the people in between then until until you right now, or, or at any time in the future, if this media of mine and whatever is still online and available to anyone else, you know, <laughs> you're a new Native American as well. You are also Native American. Because looking back in history and looking back at the true correct history, the natives lived here first. Doesn't matter what tribe, east coast to west, from northern Arctic all the way down to the tip of South America. Those people were here first. And my culture, the Lakota culture, or if you want to break all of those seven tribes, well, we, we did, seven groups of people, um, break them down into branches. If you want to clump them all together, well, there's three groups. If you want to go up above that, well, there, there's, there's one group. <laughs> There's one group of people somewhere in the western, in, in, in the mid United States. They lived in some geographic region within the last few hundred years or so. Oh well, let's just call them Dakotas or the Sioux. Or, oh, okay. Well, then now they say that there are three different uh, groups. Which one? <laughs> Teton or anyway, anyway. So, okay. Well, there's okay. Out of those three groups. The biggest one on the west side from the Teton, whatever, 
they break themselves into seven groups and one of those seven groups is Lakota so pfft, whatever <laughs> or it could be five groups I forget right now my little brain has had a quite eventful day again so I am not uh, I'm human I don't know everything detail by detail but <clears throat> one group of people okay well break them down into three groups and the biggest group is, is has five or seven subgroups bands uh, groups uh, classifications and I am one of those little uh, seven bands it's those they, we called ourselves bands you know within the last few hundred years or so what band or what clan are you from well Unk Papa was there anyone famous in your history that everyone knows about so they'll know what band you're from? Well, uh, Sedimbo. He was also Hunk Papa, so. <laughs> and I'm from that same band, I guess. <laughs> Some, I'm from his same group. Uh, no. But he's not my blood relative or nothing. So. Anyway, so that's what I would say to a, a non native person. Oh, okay, okay, I know that. <laughs> so you're one of them, huh, Sue? Yeah, well. I don't call myself Sue. I am uh, a native. I'm a Native American, sir. Uh, I'm not an American Indian. Indian is uh, the bad word. Indian is the uh, N word of today. Uh, Indian is the R word, I guess, today. <laughs> uh, Indian is the racist word today. <laughs> no less than the W word for anyone else or the K word for anyone else. <laughs> Uh, Northern European or the J word for any of those merchant uh, uh, people from the uh, Middle East or well, whatever you know it's so call me Native American call me Lakota call me Hunk Papa Lakota or call me Samuel so that's what I would say but this new train of thought that some people have had for the last 50 years or so and even before that when you accept everyone else in somehow to your country and your land and they take over and a dominant society could dominate and well whatever but somehow your people still survive genocide but time moves on and you know, everyone eventually gets along. You've got people of all colors living together. I mean, just today here in Alaska, I saw three couples driving around or riding around in a pickup. It was like a native man and, and a white woman. Uh, I do believe there was some type of Samoan or Hawaiian with, with, with a, a, a white uh, man. <laughs> and there was some type of... Uh, Western Alaska native with the uh, white person and that white person was also uh, some type of Southeast native so you know that was one way oh and I also saw a black man uh, walking around town so uh, seven different three couples that were from different races or different cultures together living in harmony and then the black man. So four different types of uh, uh, race, races or four different types of people at least uh, uh, living in harmony because I didn't, see, I didn't see any of those people fighting or shooting each other or, and uh, you know no one was lynching the black man or chasing after him or nothing. So Oh yes, yes. I guess five different uh, types of people. These three couples from different uh, uh, racial backgrounds or colors or mixed backgrounds together you know that that's America today uh, people are free to do that then I saw the black guy of course I saw all these white people around so I, <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> I always see white people everywhere even when I look at one of my native chick girlfriends here they must be native but Boy, they're all, they're lily white underneath. So they're pale and they're translucent. Anyway, 
they're also white people too. Regardless of what percentage of natives they call themselves, they're so, they're white people to me. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, today's new day, today's modern times, we embrace these things to some extent. You know, whether we really acknowledge it or not, but even though we have our old old pride and, and the old prejudice is still coming up no matter what skin color we have and I even feel some of those things that raise their ugly head you know because I'm not immune to I'm not immune to such such things I am painfully aware and I'm also human so and that's the mortal side of me you know that, that's what humans do we always somehow look at the bad things but you're not supposed to do oh my gloves I thought I left my gloves out there on the hood of the truck. I'm not seeing my gloves, and of course the wind is still uh, battering the truck around and shimmying and shaking. And you think I was here with the village? Ch I mean, anyway. So, <laughs> actually, uh, my vehicles are only to drive in and ride in. So, the whole lot of shaking going on goes else goes on elsewhere. Anyway. I don't want to shake this truck too hard. I'll set off the alarm. I'll activate these uh, stupid um, bags. Uh, eh. <laughs> anyway. So that concept is that everyone that lives here in the North and South American continents, you have to look at uh, things with a different point of view. And then, you know, especially if you're, you are a non-native, if you are of a race and color that is uh, white, yellow, or black, you should look at this uh, uh, concept and uh, embrace it. Uh, make something good of it for you. Uh, even if you can't uh, run on down to the nearest tribal office and, hey, I want to sign up. Eh. Doesn't matter if you have to, uh, you know. I mean, times are changing socially, so who knows? And the way some of the, the way that some sensitive people now are taking our country backwards just a bit. I mean, that, that's life, eh? I see it. Of course, I'm 50 years old, but when I was little, we didn't have uh, any other, uh, any other people uh, running around screaming for rights and civil rights and all that. Which, to a point, uh, everyone has, everyone has a right to speak up and be heard and all that but I mean uh, with these stories going around uh, from the olden days about oh what is one set of God's chosen people there are 12 tribes of God's chosen people each each tribe had a specific job within that group or within so one group was the priests and the chiefs of the of the religion and another another group of people were the fighters and were the lawmakers and the, eh, whatever and when I joined one of those religious organizations for a while and eh, believed as they believed hardcore for a couple of years or so I, I, I I'm ashamed of, <laughs> of that <laughs> That's not my culture, that organized religion is not my uh, eternal, uh, is not my eternal reward or punishment, uh, is not my business, uh, that organized religion or any of those uh, religious ideas coming from that book of scripture that came from Middle East goat herders a few hundred years ago or a few thousand years ago, that, that's not my a reality and I shudder to think that I was a part of that so because religion to me organized organized religion of any kind in any is inclusive only to the extent that they include uh, rightful members mostly by skin color and birth and, and anyone else that is uh, an infidel or a, a heathen or <laughs> or a gentile or or some type of ger stranger stranger even that word i i remember some reptilian woman speaking about the ger people hey 
You ought to study those concepts. Look at the Bibles again and break the words down. I, I like looking at all these new or rather well, old ideas of equality and uh, but also old ideas of uh, old technology and old ways that are frankly still alive today. But of course we feel entitled to be prejudiced and uh, exclusive to anyone else that isn't a part of our tribe and group and I so yeah I too have to grow the fuck up and uh, keep on accepting other people with different ways and different lifestyle and different culture and uh, different beliefs uh, as long as uh, none of these said people are committing genocide to anyone else and no one is raping uh, other people overtly and uh, taking people into captivity and uh, as long as no one else is um, uh, committing uh, uh, it, it's genocide uh, what, what are those other words uh, forced assimilation of culture and uh, uh, brainwashing anyone else into believing their own something you know if, if people don't do that then that's fine that's fine with me live your life as long as see as long as you're not killing anyone and uh, exterminating anyone for their alleged non-beliefs. Then whatever type of American you are right now, oh, that's fine with me. Uh, and for what I just said, and from what other people smarter than me have been saying for the last three or four or five or six decades now, and now some put it on the internet, yes, all non-native people, all non-red people, Especially people that have been immigrants and other people that have come over here because of slavery or some other type of servitude or whether they came over here on their own. But anyone that settled here and that was not native, they now live on this land and it's the land that endures. And with that, it's comes the old culture, comes the old ways and comes quite frankly, uh, ways and uh, ideas and, you know, truths, even from the uh, Creator uh, themself, himself, herself. So you are Native American if you are living here in the North and South America. You are the new Native Americans. As time goes on, you will be able to call yourself just like what I call myself. I'm full blood. My, well, I kind of look really weird. I kind of look like my president right now. Even though, even though I didn't vote for him and I, I kind of don't like the way he does things, you know, respecting the office, respecting the title, and in some ways respecting the person that actually walks around and is performing functions and duties, I have to respect that. So, like I said, I kind of, under this harsh light here, I look like my president. <laughs> kind of take on a, a, a heathen glow here, huh? In the fires of hell, uh, according to some extremist religious people that still thump their Bibles and, if you don't believe in Jesus, then you're condemned to hellfire. Eh. Well, I don't. Because I'm a native and I accept what was in my blood from hundreds and hundreds of years ago and many thousands of years ago and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years ago and millions of years ago and a few billion years before that, back to the beginning. Because that was the old way, especially for those people that lived here since the beginning on this part of the land from long ago. And we will always be here, so. And with those ideas in mind, having descended and having actually literally walked with Creator at the beginning, and those people passed down 
the ways of the Creator from the beginning. And those people lived and flourished and um, what, do, what do they say? Multiplied and replenished the earth. As far as being on this land here and other civilizations followed them because we see the remains and ruins and stuff of and there's pyramids and other structures that have been here for a long long time ever since uh, ever since the time that we're alive to uh, millions and billions of years ago there have been other civilizations but through it all the natives have survived and natives have lived through all of those things they still carry the old ways with them they still carry universal truth with them and they still speak of such things and most of them still live those things and those of us that are including non-natives in to these blessings and gifts from the Creator like I do I say all this I say all this bullshit you know to a lot of people that's what it is but to me it's not to me it's truth I say all this stuff on uh, uh, social media and I type a lot of this stuff on social media but I also say that you can do the same thing too find some quiet time just sit and think Just sit and think. Sit for a few minutes a day and just sit and think. After a few days, start to shut your mind off. Don't think about anything. After you're comfortable with all that, you know, it's not an instant process. It takes a few days, it takes a few weeks, it takes a few months, it takes a few years. It's taking me 50 years. But Actually, after the first 20 years of all of this stuff that just happened to me, I just somehow did it. No one taught me, uh, except for those uh, advanced people that did come and visit me from time to time. Even my creator visited me three times, once every decade that I've been uh, alive. Four times uh, in my lifetime. Uh, I just entered my fifth decade last month in August, or yeah. Uh, September, October, two months ago. I'm very scared because this upcoming decade I had, well, just a few days ago I was visited again, yes, but that was more or less. Hey, I, I have some concepts for you to think about and uh, you need to uh, start changing your life just a little bit. And uh, here's another uh, uh, terrible vision for you to, so, pfft. Oh my God, so I, I did put something like that up on YouTube a few days ago about the visitation and um, but I have not had my fifth uh, uh, visitation uh, face to face so far. When that happens, I will say something about it or write something about it or tell people, yes, fifth visitation because all my life I've seen Creator come every decade. So anyway, and then all the other visitations and dreams and visions and uh, daydreams and and then all the uh, out of body experiences and even sleeping and having an out of body experience or any of it, just strange dreams <laughs> that I still remember and all of the deep memories. I mean, nobody taught me any of these things. It, you could say that religion and books and movies and all that, yeah, that just, okay, I see this or I read this and wow, that that's similar to what I experience in it, so, okay. I'm not the first to discover all of these things, but whatever I've had going on in my life, it was me. It came from something else, it didn't come from anything man-made, so, well, that's what I'm trying to say. So anyone can do these things, uh, meditation-wise, uh, adjust your thinking, change your attitude, uh, throw away everything you learned, throw away uh, everything that you think you know, uh, actually throw it all away, 
No, it doesn't mean that you have to shut your brain off and go to the store with five dollars and uh, plop that five thousand uh, that five dollars down for oh I don't know a thirty thousand dollar card you know, and expect people to take you seriously. No, no, no. Keep what good stuff that you've already learned in your lifetime. You know, take your five dollars to the store. Pff, you know, buy a can of pop or buy some candy or, or whatever it costs five dollars, and you know, walk out of the store and. You know, you were in and out, and your transaction and was normal with everyone, and, and they don't think anything different of you. If if they don't already think anything different of you, likewise, don't go buy. Uh, don't take a few million to the store and and get a piece of candy. I mean, don't throw out the day-to-day -day things that helps you get along and survive. You know, mathematics-wise, uh, social-wise, uh, reading and writing. Uh, uh, washing your hands, uh, driving correctly, or whatever. I mean, no. Keep those things, but as far as your hardcore beliefs and your hardcore uh, uh, built-in, um, what is uh, cemented into your psyche and your mind and your culture-wise, you might have to start throwing some of those things out or at least discarding them and saying, hey, there's something else here. If I believe in God and my culture believes in a God or my culture believes in this, that, or the other, okay, then someone else also believes in some concept of the same or some other culture has different ways of observation of a Sabbath or observation of their dead and burying their dead or, or observations of keeping their own language and their own culture alive and so, and then get along with people like that and accept. That's what uh, all the New Age people are trying to tell you, though. Keep the good that you have and uh, throw out anything else. But, uh, yes, you have to unlearn and throw out a lot of things in your life. Once you become a blank slate, once you become a clean sheet of paper again, and it takes a while, it takes a month, it takes a few years, uh, for some people it will come naturally and it won't uh, be a, a long process. For some people it may take a lifetime. But for me, I've had all these things all my, happen to me all my life. So it wasn't too hard to, be hard to believe this concept of a God. or it wasn't too hard to believe a concept of uh, heavenly visitors or something from the other side. And uh, it wasn't hard for me to believe that uh, people lived long ago and that uh, actually people live still. Just because someone gave up the ghost uh, centuries ago or uh, millennia ago or millions of years ago, it does not mean that they're dead and they're gone. Quite frankly, some people are still here. Uh, I know because I've met a few people, uh, whether they were recently deceased, whether they were my relatives or whether I did not know them from Adam. <laughs> I have met a few uh, people that were quite old actually. So. I allude to that fact from my uh, village public safety officer years when I had a uh, visit visitation there uh, my first year of being a village public safety officer and I was patrolling and uh, driving around outside uh, was away from everybody else any villager could have uh, seen me drive past and stop my vehicle and park which I normally did here and there throughout my respective village at the time and somebody could have stepped out and either seen me uh, talking to thin air or, you know, talking to myself or shaking hands with thin air or some villager could have actually seen me visiting with two old-time native people dressed in the old skins, the old uh, caps and gloves and the old overcoats and the old pants and the old boots and uh, they had one sled behind them uh, uh, equipped with uh, all their uh, uh, skins and animal bones and rocks you know like spear tip and uh, uh, arrow tips and uh, uh, for their uh, arrows and for their spear and uh, a little walking stick or or two and all of their you know all those little uh, tools and uh, um, things uh, accoutrement <laughs> Oh, whatever you say, all of the uh, things to carry and uh, tote, all of your things with you. And there was even a couple of uh, dogs with them that were hooked up to their old-time sled. 
but uh, these n uh, native peoples, and there were two of them. Ah, there was probably three or four, but I said two. But I only speak of the two that stepped up to me, two males. Spoke to me in the old time, uh, what was the old time Athabascan uh, uh, language. And the Athabascan uh, n native language of the central uh, middle Alaska, all around the Fairbanks area region of the interior Alaskan, they, their language uh, was uh, connected to the uh, Navajo language. The Navajos can understand the Athabascans, and the Athabascans can understand the Navajos. So. <laughs> yes, I have names of these people. I have uh, some phrases in mind. But what the hell? That's my religious experience. That is my personal experience. That's my pearls. Uh, those are mine. Fucking, I don't have to cast them out to the world any more than what I already do. And likewise, you non-natives can also have some of your spiritual experiences about native things, and that's fine. Go ahead. You have that right. And you have that opportunity. You just have to like what I'm saying. I'm a native. I've, uh, for the last 30 years of my life, I've uh, more or less gone native. <laughs> when after I left my church mission, and uh, after I finished my church mission, and did a year or two of uh, um, a church, a college, but then decided that wasn't for me. Then I went to beauty school, worked for six months, and then I joined the military for five of six years. So then I had then had a few years. Uh, then I had a few, yeah, anyway. So and then later on joined the military again. <laughs> And then once fine, and then I had a few more jobs, and then uh, after that settled here and uh, settled in Alaska. And I'm unemployed now, and it's, but I accept other people, uh, and hopefully other people will accept themselves. So, open up yourself to new ideas. Open up yourself to the concept that new ideas and new things out there exist, and uh, your way is not the only way. My roots run back hundreds of years, thousands of years, tens of thousands, twenties, thirties, forties, hundreds of thousands of years and into the millions and billions of years. So, you know, if you don't have that knowledge, if you don't have those visitations come to you and the other things come to you and all good things and specifically tell you and take you away and shake hands and touch your uh, touch your head and activate your brain and uh, uh, reprogram you and so on, then I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, if you don't have those experiences, I, I, I don't know what to say. Maybe you don't, you're not supposed to. Anyway, all non-native people are Native Americans. All non-indigenous people, especially the white people, or blacks or Asians, the yellow people. If you're living here in somewhere in the North or South Americas, if this is your the homeland now, if you're living on this sacred uh, soil that was set apart and kept apart from the rest of the world for all this time and especially its own indigenous populations that were kept apart, set apart, uh, all this time, because they were one of the uh, indigenous populations worldwide, that, that stayed close to the Creator, then, you know, if you have people that did such things, stayed close to the Creator, stayed close to themselves and stayed true and also opened themselves up to other people paradigms into other people. Thus, taking the high road and staying on the high road no matter what and no matter what shit was happening to them or happened to them and what not, and what bad things happened to them. If you live here on this land, you are a Native American. I hope that you accept 
this concept and I hope that you uh, make the best of it what you will. You can't lead a horse to water as that cliche goes. Only he can make himself drink. So, And if it allows itself to be led, then fine. If you allow yourself to be led somewhere, you're no different than that cliche from that horse. <laughs> Only you will choose to drink. So remember this, all Americans now, ever since the first settlers set foot and with the intentions of staying in all of the non-native sons and daughters ever since then became the new Native Americans. And in that sense, and in that good spirit of things, everyone since those times of immigration and country being started and government formed and social security numbers and being given out and state ID and so on and so forth, and whatever the uh, current dominant society dictates, no, no. Other concepts have always been alive that included everyone. And these ideas have not died, they have not gone away. And they never will. So if you are not red like me, but you live here, you are a Native American. Just like me.